This moronic manager is about to fire an employee with over 35 plus years of experience for a petty, selfish reason. But this ultimately leads to their own downfall, as the employee gets some of their own revenge in return. Happy birthday, today's your birthday, and on with the revamped show. I was driving to work on a very rainy day. My car and all these other cars were just stopped and patiently waiting for a green light at an intersection. Suddenly, my car was rear-ended by some idiot driver at 8.35am, day one. I threw my emergency lights on and got out. The person who hit my car, ID, did the same. I took pictures of the accident and the damage. I asked her for her ID and her insurance so I could take photos of it. She handed me her ID and three insurance papers. I proceeded to take photos of each one, to which she complained. They're all the same paper. You don't need each one. Can I go to work now? Look, it's pouring rain and you just hit my car. I'm not going to take more time than I need in the rain to decipher differences between each of these papers. It's best if I take a photo of each one. Not a single sorry came out of her mouth. The back of my car suffered mild but notable damage. It was still drivable, but it just looked ugly. Idiot driver's car took most of the heat. We arranged to settle it. ID and her husband would meet with us, me and my roommate, right at 8.30 a.m. the next day, day two, with $500 to cover my damages, and then we can avoid covering damages through insurance or reporting it to the collision reporting center. Not mandatory since it's under $2,000 in damages and no one was injured. If they fail to do so, then I will go and report it to the collision center. This is a pretty good deal for ID, considering I drive a luxury vehicle and will definitely have to replace the whole bumper and she is fully at fault. Day two comes around and it's 7.45 a.m. I know the collision center is about 20 minutes drive away and the collisions are to be reported within 24 hours. So I start driving to the collision center and I tell my roommate to call me if ID is a no-show. That way, if ID and husband is a no-show at 8 a.m., I will already be at the collision center and will be able to make my claim within the 24 hour period. Lo and behold, I got a call at 8.10 a.m. from my roommate saying that ID and husband failed to show up as per our agreement. We had called, texted, and left voicemails, and still nothing. So I reported it as I said I would, including providing all of Idiot Driver's information and insurance as well. The Collision Center employee noted that no one else had reported the collision. At 8.40, notably five minutes after the 24 hour mark, I got a call from ID and husband saying they had slept in. I informed them that I had reported it like I said I would, had they failed to meet our agreement. They were offended. No, why would you do that? Blah, blah, blah. Please explain to me how both of you, two functioning adults, somehow managed to not wake up on time and just so happened to wake up after the 24 hour mark. Still not a single sorry. A few days later, my insurance company called me to confirm that I was not at fault. So ID plus husband's insurance is responsible for paying the deductible and covering the damages, and my insurance rates won't increase. As for ID and husband, have fun with your skyrocketed insurance rates and paying more for all the damages. It's like they were basically making an all or nothing bet. How oh, if we can sleep in past the 24 hour mark, then he won't be able to report it in time. So they probably thought they could get away without having to pay anything. Thing. Well, I'm glad the hero of our story had already thought of this and was heading his way to make the claim. It would have been a shock to realize not only are you not getting away with it, but now it's going to cost you more. Hello Voicey here. You're my absolute favorite to watch and wanted to share a story of petty revenge with you. Just happened about an hour ago. There is a taco place not too far from where I live. To be honest, it's not the best spot for a place as most parking spaces are tight and it's difficult to see if someone's coming around the building from the drive through window. But today, I decided to overlook all of that when my husband came home after work. Our phone dead and stating for me to take his card to get what I wanted since he knew I didn't like the place he picked for his own food. So I went for tacos and not wanting to take up the drive through since I had no idea what I wanted yet, decided to park and go inside to make room for those who did know their order. The restaurant itself is not the problem here. They were just fine, friendly, clean, and waited patiently while I figured out my order. It was after I had my bag in hand and headed back to my car. 
I put my bag onto the passenger seat, my drink in the cup holder, and started up, ready to back out and start heading home. That's when I notice her. A Karen, sitting in her mummy minivan, across several parking spaces behind where myself and another vehicle were parked. I thought at first that she was perhaps checking her order after getting it in the drive-thru. I sat there with my engine running, telling myself to have patience, and she would move on soon enough. Boy was I wrong. She decided she was content exactly where she was sitting, even though she was blocking the rest of us who were parked. She unwrapped a taco and began to eat. I watched as she stared off in the other direction a moment before pulling out her cell phone to make a call. I'm guessing not a necessary business call, as she was giggling while still eating. I attempted to alert her to my presence and that I wanted to leave my parking spot by revving my engine a couple of times. She looked over my car and just sat there. I put up my hand as if to question, are you going to move or not? Again, she just sat there. She didn't seem to have a care in the world that she was keeping others from doing what they needed to do. There are some days where I tell myself that I need to have more patience for stupid people, but today was not one of them. I had enough of waiting and decided to slowly back out anyway. I worked my car backwards, ensuring that I would cut it really close to her minivan, but not hit it. My passenger window was almost touching her side mirror. She once again looked at me with this, you couldn't have waited for me, look on her face. I gave her the smuggest grin I could muster up and flipped her off before driving forward towards the road. Looking in my rear view mirror, apparently she had decided I made her mad enough to follow in pursuit. I noticed her sitting right behind me, her mouth full of food, her drink in hand, and her head tilted to hold her cell phone between her ear and shoulder. I saw her flip me off back and I had to laugh at how she was trying to do this so desperately as she wanted to do all the rest of what she was doing. I noticed her face was soured with anger and she wanted to, I assume, curse me out. Not that I would have given her the time of day anyway to do that. I was next in line to make my way into traffic on our road so I could head home. So I decided to take my sweet time. I pretended to look for something in my purse, took a sip of my own drink, coughed on purpose, sipped my drink again, that sort of stuff. I waited until just the right moment before a line of traffic was going to block anyone from going out before I took off all of a sudden, leaving her there, slamming on her brakes as she had attempted to follow me. I peered in my rear view mirror just enough where I could see her with napkins. She'd obviously spilled that lovely drink all over herself in having to stop her van. That phone was no longer there. Either she had dropped it when she spilled, or she put it down, I don't know. I hope she's learned her lesson to not block parked people like that and never tries to do that to anyone else. The next person that happens to might not be so kind as to only go for petty revenge. They may end up knocking on her window and telling her to move it in not such kind words. I will state this at this time. Had she had any kids with her, I would have not done what I did. I did make sure to take notice she was by herself at the time. I would never want to put any child in danger. I hope you've all enjoyed my petty revenge and have a wonderful day. Those tacos tasted 10 times better by the way. Don't you just love how she was taking up so many parks and blocking everybody from leaving. And yet somehow there's this expectation of like, can't you just wait for me? Um, no. If you're gonna take up that much space, which you shouldn't be doing in the first place, you better be ready to move as soon as somebody needs to get through. Back when I was a flight instructor at a college, a decade ago, I had a horrible student. He didn't return calls, he never studied, and rarely showed up on time. One of my lesson slots was at 7am on Saturday mornings, which none of my other students could accept due to other scheduling. So I put him in that slot. I knew he lived 45 minutes from the airport, and in order to have the plane ready on time, he would need to be there 30 minutes before his slot started. So he would have to be waking up around 5am to make it there on time. Now, I'm not a jerk, and I knew he wouldn't be able to make those time slots since he was in a fraternity and was the partying type. So I told him that even though we were officially scheduled then, we could just fly at a later time in the day. It also benefited me since I didn't want to be up that early. Due to his poor performance, we had to have a meeting with my supervisor to go over why he was having issues. I knew he would blame me since he never took responsibility for any of his problems. So luckily I had been documenting all of our issues with my supervisor. 
Of course, the meeting comes and he blames me, saying that me changing our schedule around is causing him issues. So of course, I offer to stick rigidly to our schedule. My student says that this will solve all our problems. My boss knows it won't, but is willing to let the student dig his own grave. So he agrees to it as well. Now, this isn't a big problem for me, since I only live a few minutes from the airport, and we have an online system that allows me to see if he's shown up yet. Worst case scenario for me is he shows up in time, and I have to drive a few minutes before our session. Our first weekend with this schedule comes, and he never shows up. I call a few times, leave some messages, and then half an hour after we were supposed to start, call into the office and have them charge him for a no call no show, which pays me just as much as him showing up would have. I usually waive these if the student can give me even a decent excuse, but he didn't. He finally calls me around noon and says that he forgot to set his alarm. Could we fly later in the day? I remind him of our agreement that we need to stick straight to our schedule. Second weekend rolls around and he no call no shows again, so he gets charged again. This happens on and off for the next month, with him occasionally showing, sometimes not. Finally my boss gets tired of it and tells him that if he no call no shows again, he's out of the program. At this point he's two years into getting his degree, and he has over 120 hours of private pilot training. A normal student will have the certificate by 50 hours give or take. Between classes and flying, he has, or his parents have, probably dropped around $80,000. So he takes this pretty seriously. Next weekend comes and I see that he's checked in on time. So I head into work and see him driving out of the parking lot as I pull in. I get into the office and our head instructor tells me that they smelled alcohol on him and are sending him to get drug tested. He comes back with a BAC above the limit for flying, but below that for driving, and gets booted from the program. Turns out he took it seriously to show up, but not enough to not party the night before. Luckily for him, he was able to switch majors, but a bunch of his classes would have been aviation related, which don't transfer to other majors. So he wasted a good chunk of money and never even got a private pilot certificate. My uncle had worked for about 35 years at a large well-known grocery store chain in the US. Basically, he started working as a grocery bagger when he was 16 years old and just never stopped working there. For 35 years, he worked at the same location, doing basically every task in the store. He finished high school and never looked back, always continuing at this location. His pay increased to the maximum level for non-managers and he got offered numerous promotions to manager or even district manager positions that would have paid more, but he always turned them down. He knew what he wanted from his life and he didn't want any additional responsibility. During all these years, my uncle, who we'll call Bob, has gained significant experience doing virtually any job in the store. Since he worked there longer than any manager, most of them referenced him if there was ever an issue. Bob didn't mind helping out and genuinely wanted the store he had spent so much time at to succeed. One part of my uncle's job that was cool was that he literally served the same families as they grew up. His friend's parents that were in their 40s when he started in high school were now in their 70s and had continued shopping at the store. The town was relatively small and he had a lot of personal relationships with many of the regular customers at the store. They had essentially grown up together. One thing my uncle is really good at is making eye-popping sales displays. Think making American flags or footballs out of different colored soda packs stacked on each other or bread flowers. You get the idea. According to him, these awesome sales displays really helped to move the product and customers also liked seeing the cool displays. My uncle took a lot of pride in these displays and was always coming up with new ways to put contemporary themes in them. Enter the new store manager. Uh oh. This new manager, who we'll call Tammy, was much younger than my uncle, but similar in some ways. Like my uncle, she had worked her way through the system, but had accepted every promotion she'd ever gotten. She knew how to do the jobs in the stores, but she didn't have the attention to detail or raw experience that my uncle had. She also had a desire to significantly increase store profits so that she could be in contention for district manager. Immediately there was friction between my uncle and Tammy. Tammy hated having to rely on someone to help her out and wanted to show everyone that she was the boss. 
To do this, she thought it would be a good idea to make some changes to the store and various departments. I would go into specifics, but they aren't important. In general, they were unpopular. What really matters is the following interaction regarding a soda display. My uncle had ordered more boxes of soda from the distributor, but there were some delays. This takes place on a Tuesday. Where is my soda? It should be here. Our store sales are going to be hurt because there isn't soda for sale near the entrance. Our distributor has delayed the shipment. It won't be here until Thursday. Okay, but it had better be here on time on that day or I will write you up. Okay, I'll make sure of it. It will have a gorgeous display the next day. Where is the soda boxes? Why is there nothing for sale? I already told you. The shipment is coming tomorrow. The display will be set up tomorrow as soon as it arrives. Okay, but you better make sure there's never another late shipment again, or I'll have your head, paraphrase. The next day, Thursday. The soda had arrived, and my uncle set up the display beautifully. Customers complimented him on the display, in front of Tammy, which she didn't like, and the sales were strong of the product. Everything seemed to be going off without a hitch. However, Tammy, always the wisest one in the room, decided that she would be better managing the bread and bakery displays herself, so she relieved Bob of his duties. Of course, my uncle, being the low-level employee that he was, just rolled with it, knowing full well that sales would fall in the department. Sure enough, sales in the bakery bread department fell, but of course Tammy wrote it off as general loss of interest. The banter between Bob and Tammy continued for several months, until one day it came to a head. A shipment that was supposed to arrive, of some food I can't remember what, had not arrived and was running several hours behind schedule, which led to the following conversation. Bob, where is my shipment? It should have been stocked and ready to go by now. The shipment has been delayed for X reason. It will be here in two hours. I don't care why it's late. You should have scheduled it earlier. You're fired. And just like that, my uncle was fired from the store he had worked for for 35 plus years. My uncle wasn't an idiot. He knew any grocery store in the universe would love to hire him. He literally got fired, took off his apron, got in his car, and drove to the other side of town, walked into another location of the same chain, asked to speak to the manager, and got hired on the spot. The manager at the other store couldn't believe that the other manager would be so stupid to fire someone with so much experience. Now, it wasn't long before customers figured out what had happened. First, there stopped being displays of any kind, as soda and other items were just generically stacked in a small cube. Second, long-time customers in the bakery or bread department started wondering where Bob was and complaining to management of the store. When they were told he was fired for a BS reason, they all left the store and drove over to the new store Bob worked at and began shopping there. Sales at the store fell significantly, and there were so many complaints received from unhappy customers that corporate got involved, and any complaint about Bob not being there was referred directly to the C-suites. Tammy got fired less than a month after firing Bob. Meanwhile, sales at the store Bob worked at increased significantly, as many new customers followed him over to the new location. It just goes to show there are many reasons why people shop at the place they shop at. It's not just low prices that give people a perspective of value. It could be the experience of why they're shopping there. And in this case, it was because of Bob that people had a much more pleasant experience shopping at that store. Again, we see another case of bad management, where they don't see the whole picture and what's actually creating the value. And her own jealousy is what really took over. She couldn't handle the fact that somebody that was below her could be better than her at the job and was adding much more value. Submit your story to be read on the channel at voiceyhearstories at gmail.com and join our Voicey Veteran community at r slash voiceyhear. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode. Alright Voicey Veterans, I'll see you in the next one.